We all love Disney and Pixar's Finding Nemo, the lovable story of a father's journey to save his son from addiction to drugs. I have a new theory about the underlying story of the Pixar classic that gives a whole new meaning to the characters and their journeys. The story begins with the initial incident, the cause of Marlin's issues, the tragic death of his fish wife. Prior to this, they are starting a new life in the undersea version of the suburbs. It is an ideal lifestyle. Nice anemone and a quiet reef, kids on the way, domestic perfection. That is Marlin's dream. And when it is tragically ripped from his mind, he cannot handle it. So he lapses into a protective mode. He's doing everything he can to attempt to salvage and protect what he can. This is where the surviving son Nemo comes in. Marlin doesn't see Nemo as a separate being. He views Nemo as his last connection to his lost love and is doing everything beyond reason to protect him. Due to this sheltering and objectification, Nemo has the natural urge to experience new excitement this is illustrated when he jumps out of bed and runs outside into the big bad world eager for his first day of school. When they arrive at school, Marlon learns that they are going to be dropped off. The drop off represents the physical and metaphorical transition from sheltered suburbia to the big dangerous city. When Nemo and his new friends arrive at the drop off, they play the game of how far can they go. In this situation, the drop-off is a metaphor for drugs, and themselves in a world of drugs. At first, Nemo's friends start harmlessly experimenting with drugs. None of them appear to be in any immediate danger. Nemo is cautious to enter that world at first, but eager to prove himself. One of the cool kids decides to take that leap. Just as he is about to go over the edge, Marlin catches him and scolds him for taking on more than he can handle. It is this conversation that pushes Nemo to take the action that he does. Years of Marlin's overprotection gives him the urge to rebel, coupled with the need for an escape from his boring, sheltered suburban existences. This is what causes him to go too far with experimentation when Nemo swims to the drop-off, once again, metaphorically for sinking deeper into the world of drugs as he goes deeper and deeper. In an attempt to save him, Marlin calls out for him to return to safety. Just as it looks as if he can make a safe return, the diver appears. The diver, later revealed to be the dentist, is represented as addiction. When he captures Nemo, this is when Nemo descends into a point of dependency, almost beyond help, a point where he is not only out of touch with, but is completely removed from the outside world. Marlin, despite his issues, is a good father and decides to go after him into the abyss. This is the point where the drop-off becomes a physical disconnect. It literally represents the physical transition from the suburban to the urban world and causes him to descend to the world of drug use. Then mine and everyone else's favorite character is introduced. Dory. Dory is an ex-addict. This is illustrated by her short-term memory loss. What Dory represents is a character that is incredibly mentally damaged by her years of abuse. She is not currently using but has literally become trapped inside that world, in spite of her efforts to get out. This is why, through the movie, Dory, despite her mental deficiencies, is really more of a guide for Marlon. Her world is a scary, dangerous world, but she is so ingrained to do it that she is able to navigate through it without being harmed, such as the connections of a former addict might have with dealers and other druggies. Dory is Marlon's biggest asset in a world is not belong in nor understand. This brings us to the sharks. What Bruce and his friends represent is a certain recovering addict. After prolonged drug use, people's bodies can sometimes develop physical dependency on a substance, where it is no longer about feeling good, but the body craves it to a point that you can suffer severe damage if the drug is withdrawn. Regardless of the physical dependency, there is a mental recognition of the problem and a drive to change it. The best evidence of this is how Bruce, a shark and natural predator, has started a 12-step program for other sharks to stop eating fish. This represents an interesting simile, a physical addict trying to recover. 
cold turkey. Like a shark trying to stop eating fish. It is fighting what is, or has become, their very nature and existence. This further illustrates the hostility and irritability caused by the recovery by showing how one sniff of Dory's blood could send Bruce into a blind, hunger-driven rage. Meanwhile, we find out what happened to Nemo. He awakens in a fish tank in the dentist's office along with other fish. The tank represents a level of addiction which the addict enters. A maddening and solitary world completely outside of society. Nemo's removal from his ocean represents the level of drug use and addiction which he is completely removed from society. He and the other hardcore addicts or fish in the tank have reached a point where they are trying to escape but the dentist, the addiction, is holding them there. There are lots of clues in the movie that points us to this conclusion. For example, all the fish in the tank are anywhere between nervous or completely insane. From the blowfish who is jumpy and easily excited to Deb, the bluefish who thinks her reflection is her sister. There's also Gil, who has concocted several fruitless escape plans. The other fish seem to want to escape, but understand the hopelessness of the situation. There are the fish that are made tougher by being able to survive in the level of dependency for so long. It is not uncommon for a new kid in the tank to be killed, which appears to be the fate set for Nemo. He can either escape, or his dad must save him. After a run with the jellyfish, Marlin awakens with a black sea turtle named Crush. It is obvious to nearly any viewer that Crush is a user of marijuana. What he and the other turtles represent are users of softcore drugs like pot. He is laid back. He doesn't fear a trip or try to push himself to extreme levels of the highness, he just goes with the flow and enjoys the ride. He is not a danger to himself and to others. There is one crucial frame following when Crush says, You're riding it, dude. Where the camera zooms, an audience shown a large group of sea turtles. This is illustrating that there are a lot more individuals who use certain drugs and are okay. They can fully function in society. Crush and the turtles are stoners, but they aren't addicts. Nemo then learns from Nigel that the pelican, that his father looking for him, crossed the entire ocean to help him set free. This gives him the motivation to help himself. The only way that Nemo can escape his addiction and his overprotective parent is to recognize that he has a problem only he can solve. This weakness that was installed in him by his own father is what drove him to abuse and the only way to escape it to overcome himself. However, by the time this is realized, Darla, the ultimate sign of his demise, arrives. Nemo is terrified. The scene in which he is removed from the tank, flops around in the office, then plays dead in order to be flushed down the toilet. It's interpreted as the brush with death that an attic might need to reach, with the conclusion of the problem within themselves, and they need to solve it. Nemo's escape down the sink was no coincidence. One needs to reach rock bottom to have drive to escape. And sometimes, everything has to go down this drain for it to occur. Marlin sees Nemo playing, dead, and is convinced he has failed in bringing back his son. When they are reunited, Marlin realizes that this battle was never his battle alone. Nemo needed to see that his father truly cared, and his father needed to see that Nemo was not helpless. That is the only way for his addiction to end, and end happily. One final thought for those who stuck around in the credits. The final sequence shown after the film portrays the fish from the tank, after having completed their escape plan to roll out the window in their little bags in the harbor, they are depicted floating in the ocean. After seeing someone close to them have a brush with death, only to escape, they simultaneously recognize their own power and mortality, causing further motivation. However, they are unable to escape their individual bags, showing that their road to recovery is not over, and that they may be back into the real world 
they have still not been able to break free from their addiction completely. <laughs>